Uh, Maxime Vachelagraf, uh, you've just won your game against Vichy Anand, uh, a debate in the time on off. Uh, first of all, congratulations, and then what happened in the game and how far was the opening decisive? Uh, yeah, it went uh, pretty well for me. I mean, even though I didn't uh, repeat this line because I didn't expect it, I managed to recollect my memories of it, so that was already a good news. Mm, I know the line is probably only slightly better for white at the end. Um, after I get, for instance, bishop d6, this was uh, still in my book. But uh, in terms of practical play, it's very pleasant for me to play. And uh, I just had free play and um, could try working on the queen side or push my pawns on the king side. And well, uh, as a matter of fact, I guess I did both. <laughs> Uh, when the queens came off, when you entered the end game, how did you evaluate the position? Did you think it was already winning or just that it was very agreeable, very pleasant position to play? Oh, it's very pleasant. I wouldn't say it's winning, but uh, uh, it became winning after Vichy blundered uh, 92, after which he cannot play d5 because then the knight comes back to d4 and the pawn on e6 falls. And uh, well, after that, my rook penetrates on d6 and it's just uh, too difficult to hold. Uh, so you're now on one and a half out of two. Yesterday you escaped from what was a difficult position. You also were very close to the French border here, so there's a lot of fans. Um, how does it feel for you to play in front of so many people? Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, uh, last year there were already many, many players, but uh, this time uh, there are even many more. Amazing, you know, you sh we should credit them because they're ready to play up to 10 hours a day. And that deserves some special round of applause, I think. <laughs> um, okay, and to conclude, well, first of all, since you mentioned this, do you ever play any events still these days where you play two rounds a day? And how do you think you would cope? Uh, well, the last time I did that, and it were not rapid games. Uh, well, I was um, a bit younger and, you know, full of dreams and hopes. I'm still full of dreams and hopes, but uh, not the one where I can play two games a day. <laughs> and uh, two a bit more random questions to conclude this interview. First of all, uh, when and why did you decide to become a chess professional? Well, it just went naturally. I mean, I didn't have any big plans, but, uh, you know, things were going good for me in chess. Uh, and well. So I just thought uh, I should as well try it, try to be, to play full time and uh, leave the studies behind and uh, see how it goes. And well, I, I'm not regretting my choice. And finally, uh, tell us, on the white side of the board, have you ever played the King's Gambit as a surprise weapon? Um, I guess I played it once, but only in Blitz. I mean, and, well, I guess a few of my coaches and uh, everyone would kill me if I played it. <laughs> so we will not see you playing it ever again? Uh, well, in Blitz it's very possible. In classical chess it's, you know, I will need some time to adjust to the sort of giving up a pawn so early. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and congratulations once again. Thank you.